Time for another update from the Exposition News Network that gets the rest of the cast up to speed on the plot, because God knows there's not a better way to do that. This news broadcaster doesn't say a word during this entire panning shot, which goes on for at least five seconds. She just stares awkwardly at the camera. So either the anchor lady was waiting for the soundtrack to wind down, or her teleprompter malfunctioned. Yes, but it also presents an opportunity. In a display of unwavering dedication to duty. And the answer to that last sin is answered in this one when she sits quietly for a whole minute while Sid is talking. Like she's in the room with him and she doesn't want to be rude. And only starts at the report again once he's made his point. They're baiting us. Trying to draw us out. Bait, huh? Yeah, that's right. Here are your friends. Come and get them. That's assuming a bit much since this station has followed your every move since the beginning. So they would likely report on the capture or death of any one of you. Well, if they're daring us to mount a rescue, I'll take that action. All in. Great plan, Snow. Let's walk right into the trap they set for us. What could possibly go wrong? Bets are on the table. We leave when you're ready. I'll be standing by. Why are you Texan? Yeah, I know that's hypocritical of me for sending a southern accent and not Fang and Vanille's Australian one, but a lifetime of science fiction movies with British accents has kind of prepared me for that one. Texas is just too close to home. Take those Psycom guys apart. And we're supposed to take on all of them? I think the whole division's on board. A little while ago, your plan was to take down the entire sanctum with just yourself and Hope. Honestly, your chances have improved a few thousand percent since then. Bring them on. Vanille's in there. I'm sure she's fine. And says he was captured too. Anyone want to mention him? I'm terrified, but I'll be okay. Because I have you, and this guy, and Fang. The two of you spent only a few hours together. You're not in the position to judge character yet. What do you mean, this guy? <laughs> <laughs> I got your mom killed. Remember how in past Final Fantasy games you actually got to fly the airships? Whatever happened to that? We didn't expect to see you here in person, your eminence. The dude has a special throne set up on the bridge. I don't think you can ever be unexpected when preparations like that have been made for you. Catholic priests aren't surprised when the Pope shows up at St. Peter's Basilica, after all. My entire character is written around my glasses. What's the hold up? Stand by. Verifying identification code. Do they have a code clearance? It's an older code, sir, but it checks out. Code red, repeat. Code red. Attention all crew, this is not a drill, go red. The Palamecia accepted their confirmation code and even let them land. Yet not even a minute after they've landed, and with no one spotting them, the alarm sounds. I really can't wrap my head around the design of this airship. This entire section is a bunch of floating platforms outside the ship, and only serves as an access route to another part of the ship further up. Couldn't you have just made a hallway? I mean, that's what this entire world is made up of. This is the most dangerous and roundabout way of getting from point A to point B that I've ever seen. Is the pacing dead yet? I don't know, let's have another flashback to be sure. Agreed. How come the Chocobo didn't try to stop Sass from killing himself back then? I mean, it did before, and it had ample time to here. Instead it just floats next to Vanille and watches. Must. Express. Emotions. Through. Glasses. That's twice now that someone has been KO'd by a hit to the neck, when previously they've been shown to be able to take much more. Hell, Snow got knocked out by a neck chop and later walked off a punch from a giant robot. I'm pathetic. That's my line. I'm the one who lied to everyone. But... If I just told the truth... You actually never lied to anyone but Fang. And lying about losing your memories didn't really affect anything. Or at least I assume it didn't, since the catalyst for this whole plot is Sarah becoming a lassie, which we never see. But I can't think of any way Fang knowing the truth would have prevented that. God damn, this is the second flashback in this scene. I don't think I've ever played a game so dense yet at the same time so empty. I liked where the scene was going until the magic closed onto her. Code green is a step up from code red. And what exactly is the difference? You already had soldiers converging on their location. Nothing new happens because of this alert switch. Hi guys, my name is Jerry. Maybe you met my brother Jared. I'll be the plot device for your escape this evening. Yeah. Really? I've eaten McNuggets that way more than that chocobo. And that guy is wearing a helmet. And if you could escape like this, why didn't you do so back on the train? And why didn't they put handcuffs on either of the two dangerous we'll see? <laughs> now she's giving me uncomfortable boners. Alright, time to split. Not run. There's a difference. Gotcha. No, there isn't. At least not in this case, since your goal is to run away from the Sanctum, which is what you've been doing the entire game. Quick, exchange those heavy assault rifles for two pistols and a stick with antlers glued onto it. Perfect. Scares me. Scares me so much. I think I might die of fright. This dialogue. Code purple! I repeat, code purple! What do any of these vague color codes even mean? 
Do they actually have a system in place for when the sea sneak on board their heavily defended aircraft? And if they did, why is it so ineffective? Here's an idea for your next color-coded alert. Seal all the giant bulkhead doors and depressurize their sector. In fact, scrap all the alerts and just do that. Looks like we ain't the only ones cleaning house. Could be Lucy. This music is really out of place for what's supposed to be a daring rescue escape mission. Could be Fang. Come on, let's hurry. Let's go get rescued. Uh -uh. No, not this time. For once in my life, I am going to save her. You don't even know she's on board. these colors. What's it mean? I've begun to notice that the characters in this game are just as clueless as I am about everything and have to ask a lot of the same questions I do, and receive no actual answer. Just like in my case. Colonel, we've lost the intruders. Why that makes me so angry I need to take off my glasses. That means we're code yellow. No, wait. Code blue? If we were orange, that would mean- Just stop it. This joke is not as witty as you think it is. Hell, some of the sins I phone in in every episode are more entertaining than this. The escapees made it through! They're entering the engine room! That makes me so angry I need to break my glasses. No! Damn the sea! I want to reiterate that these guys knew the Lassie would be coming. Their entire plan was to lure them here. So why does it seem like they were completely unprepared for the Lassie actually showing up? Intruders located! They're on the weather deck, starboard side! That makes me so mad I need to throw my glasses. I am now unable to express my emotional state without the aid of my corrective lenses. Okay, I can do that for about four seconds before copyright rules kick me in the ass. Desperate times demand flexibility. Code white. Ah, uh, code white doesn't change anything either. How is that? If the reactor stopped, how is this thing still in the air? So light. How you figure this makes us lucky? Because when we kill it, we're one step closer to Vanille. How's that? And says, anyone remember him? Black guy with an afro, fond of saying enemies of Cocoon? Any of this ringing a bell? Vanille! Saz is fine too, by the way. Seriously, what the hell is wrong with you people? Vanille! <coughs> you yell my name, I yell your name, reunion cliche. Vanille is accidentally copying a feel, proving she's even capable of handing out lady boners. <laughs> She showed all of you her brand earlier and you didn't act so modest. And Lightning is a woman, so she doesn't even have to be embarrassed here. Bill, go fish. Got it. There's so much bullshit in this scene, I'm just going to shoot questions off rapid fire. Where is all the cable coming from in a vanilla staff? How does Fang jump that high? How do the hooks catch up with the monster in high wind? How does a girl who can't weigh more than 110 pounds manage to reel in a flying monster the size of a semi? And why does stabbing it in the neck instantly tame it? Are none of you guys going to help Sass? The guy looks like he's about to die. Hashtag Black Lives Matter. Hundreds of anti-aircraft guns failed to hit one single target. Humans have no business here. What? Your eminence! <laughs> if only you had kept your glasses on, you might have been able to avoid that. Killing your own henchmen means you're evil. Without our help, death is all of which you're capable. You saw the fools. A mindless mob drunk on fear of a viewless sea. The only reason everyone is afraid of the sea is because you brainwashed them into believing Pulse Sea are the enemy. If the logic of your argument that humans are assholes and can't be trusted relies on the situation you personally created, then that's just sophism. Le sea? <laughs> you mean me? <laughs> oh, child, perish the thought. I am more than that. I am Falsi. Wait, so Falsi can talk? So what's the big deal about not telling Lassie what their focus is? These are missions that you want them to accomplish, so why be vague at all when you can communicate so easily? Guess Falsi don't go down as easy as the rest of us. Except for the one you killed pretty easily back at the beginning, but that one doesn't count, I guess. You should know quite well already the sure way of dispatching our kind. Ragnarok. What's Ragnarok? Ah! Ah! Fang suffers from Harry Potter scar syndrome, which makes markings and scars start hurting the moment someone says something related to it. Ragnarok is the beast one of you must become in order to lay waste to Cocoon. You have had the dream. One among you will become that monstrosity. Defeat Orphan and destroy Cocoon. 
So why didn't you tell them that back at the beginning? I keep asking this because I spent hours listening to these characters whine about not knowing their focus and blindly guessing at it. Now you just up and spell it out for them 20 hours in? Why did it even need to be a mystery in the first place? Teleporting is always used to be an annoying dick. Allow me to help you see the truth of things. This guy's name should be King Gamefax, since all he seems to do is explain the stuff the game should have been more clear about. All he needs is an obnoxious ASCII art logo printed on his robes. Sarah asked us to save Cocoon before she turned to crystal. Save it! And that's what we're gonna do! The moment you arrived, your friend wept crystal tears. This was because her focus required that you be brought together. That girl did nothing but assemble the tools for Cocoon's destruction. Why would Sarah be given a focus of recruiting a group of new Lassie to destroy Cocoon if the only Lassie Barthandalus needed was Fang, the Lassie who can turn into Ragnarok? And she's so fixated on Vanille that she would do just about anything to protect her, including destroy Cocoon. The rest of them serve no purpose. Why is this ship crashing again? The only damage it took during all of this was the hole they shot in the roof to get to the bridge. And that happened a while ago, and seemingly did nothing. Not so fast, let's see. This guy is still alive despite the fact that a soldier emptied an entire magazine into him at point blank range just a few hours ago. He just got better, I guess. Jump cuts, dog fighting, confusion. This is what the building that the plane phase into looks like. On the inside, they find a sprawling underground subway, a ruined city, and long hallways filled with monsters. Where are we? Looks like a piece of pulse. Pulse? What, you mean like the modem vestige? Does it? Because this looks nothing like that. In fact, this place doesn't look too different from any of the other places we've seen so far. And furthermore, once we get to Pulse, we see nothing that looks even remotely like this. It's almost like Dysley wants it to come true. Seems that way. He sure didn't mind explaining it. Here's your focus on the silver platter. Just... fuck this game. Long ago, the Falci who made their home on Grand Pulse were afraid of invasion from the outside. As part of their battle preparations, they created an army of living weapons. And they stored those weapons in arcs. And they hid the arcs all over the world. That's an incredibly stupid battle plan. Let's create an army to protect ourselves from invasion. Then we'll hide that army in pieces all over the world, including one on the very world our enemies inhabit. Why did we lose again? They used to say the arcs had a more practical purpose. Mm -hmm. Huh. Really? Yeah. To force Lassie to master their shiny new powers. This arc shit goes on forever. The characters even straight up state that it's solely for grinding out levels. Wait! You traitor! <laughs> Sid blocks a sword with his bare hand. The foul sea have watched over you, guiding your every step. The luck that saved you time and again was a deliberate machination. Actual admission of Deus Ex Machina. I put you on the path. That was my focus. <laughs> You're a see? Since long before we met, I did my best to assist you, as bid by the Sanctum Valsi. So Sid's focus was to help the Pulse Sea destroy Cocoon? He was given this focus presumably years ago, meaning just like Dodge, he was given a focus that couldn't even be completed until a Pulse Valsi showed up and made some Lassie. The Primarch, or should I say, Bartandalus is crafting you into the instruments of Cocoon's demise. Why? To restore the Maker. The Maker? The entity responsible for creating both humans and Falci. Who is totally not God, by the way. The difference being we call him the Maker. Think of it as kind of our remix of God. Long ago, the Maker departed this world, leaving the two races behind. Here's a bunch of footage that has no bearing on what I'm telling you. Remember that parade Vanilla and Saz watched? That sure was cool, wasn't it? As for the humans, they forgot the order imposed by the Maker. They began to war amongst themselves for the first time in history. Humans are assholes, cliché. Again, only this time I'm not going to go on a rant about why it's stupid. Calling back the Maker requires a fitting sacrifice. Yeah, we've heard. The destruction of Cocoon. The lives of this world's entire populace in bloody tribute. If the Falci want to call back the Maker by sacrificing everyone, including themselves, what really is the point? There'll be no one around to even confirm if he shows up. And how do you know this will even work? No explanation is ever given to how the Falci know all of this. They just immediately settle on genocide as the means to the end. I don't get it. Why do they need us? Couldn't the Falci end Cocoon with just a thought? 
Their existence is bound to the creation and maintenance of this floating shell. It is their very nature that holds them in check. Isaac Asimov's Law of Robotics has quite the reach. If we can stop this by doing nothing... We'll do nothing. Well, that's where it should end, because she's not wrong. They can actually stop Barthandalus's plan to destroy Cocoon by sitting on their hands and taking one for the team. Kind of a big oversight on Barthandalus's part. Mwahahaha, <laughs> those foolish let's see. They're dancing in the palm of my hand. What's that? They're playing hacky sack. If I can defeat you here, the Falsy plan will fail. Brains! I will use all my remaining power. I'm seriously beginning to think they snuck depressants into his water during recording. I sound more energetic reading lines than this guy. At first I thought Sid turned into a Seath here, but that doesn't seem to be the case since he's clearly in control of himself. So how come Lightning and the rest of the party can't do this? They're Lassie too. Dodge really got the short end of the stick when it came to that turning into Crystal deal. Looks like it's a dead end. Dead end? It's a ruined city. You can go any direction you want. I have had enough of this! Where's the way out?! I've been screaming this a lot ever since I started on this part of the game. Way out? Who said there was one? And that's what I've suspected is the likely answer. I'm gonna make Sarah proud. Snow has his umpteenth motivational speech about how much he believes in Sarah. I've had Jehovah's Witnesses knock on my door who aren't as dedicated to something. Count me out. What? Mm -hmm. If you all want to go it on your own, then so will I. God damn it, I need character development. So I'm going to get angry and do something irrational for no good reason. That seems to work for everyone else. You turn Seath and there's no coming back. Remember those words for later. That thing's here to help us? Yeah, help. That's what Eidolans do. They help us. Eidolans are our salvation. If we can't decide what to do next, they come put us out of our misery! Why didn't they kill all of you a hundred times over already, if that's the case? Bahama got one serious downgrade if Snow can block its attack with his forearms. A new path! Look, a new linear path to walk down. How exciting. An airship? And it's from Grand Pulse! Great, can't wait for all of you to survive another deadly plane crash. <laughs> Leave it to me. <laughs> this game has piled so much comic relief onto poor Saz that he's almost a racist minstrel show at this point. The world's full of lies. There's no way of knowing what's right. All we can do is believe in ourselves. Stop talking. All of you. You're not moving the plot forward. You're just opening your mouths in an endless stream of motivational speeches. Develop a drinking or a drug problem before you need this much support. From here on out, I use my eyes. Think. Act. Well said. I really liked how you phrased it in a way that no human would ever speak like. Off to hell we go. That's also what I've been telling myself since I started this game. Meanwhile, in Australia... Actually, I think the localization team might have confused it for Australia. What explained Fang and Vanilla's accents? Playful little critter, isn't he? Yeah, we'll play with someone else. <laughs> Happens all the time. Why are you all so relaxed about the giant worm trying to eat you? I sure can't. <laughs> See, this is why you should have human reactions to things. Why? Falling has no effect in this world. Hell, with your record, you should go get them. Oh, so they do have to shoot that stuff to summon an Adolin. That kind of means everyone except Saz and Lightning are screwed on that front. You were having a dream. A pretty strange dream. Yeah, I just narrated my thoughts about stuff for three minutes. I think something might be wrong with me. You can actually understand the chocobo? For real? Like, seriously? You are a Disney princess. Hope actually passed out because he got too sad. And this isn't long after he gave a motivational speech to the rest of the group about pushing forward. And after we see him having a good time gathering food with the chocobo. Erba. The place it all began. Hope. The place where the pulse fell sea lay dreaming. Vanille and Fang's home. How does Hope know about the town where Vanille and Fang came from? He knows nothing about Pulse, and if Vanille and Fang mention it, why haven't they already gone there? Your whole reason for coming to Pulse was to find a way to remove your brands. Did it not occur to you to check the one place that might have a clue rather than wander the empty plains? I'm scared. We understand. You're not gonna go through this ordeal alone, you know. God, this game is like an AA meeting. You mean... that came from me? You've seen this happen twice now with Lightning and Fang. Idolin should not be this much of a surprise. Hey, how long since your last boner? Zero seconds now. Arch light, arch lit, uh, archly, archold. Fuck it, it's a stupid made up word anyway. Hey, we should help this one out. 
Come on, we, we can't just ignore it. 30 hours in and this game finally lets you do side quests. However, all the side quests are pretty much go here and kill this enemy for a reward. So it's really no different than what you were already doing. A Grand Pulse Falci made this path. Yep. I bet it's off digging more tunnels right now. Who exactly is it making roads for? This world is devoid of people. All it has are monsters and animals. Making roads where roads ain't meant to go, huh? Yeah, it kind of sounds like us. All right, roly poly. Let's hit your ride on that thing. And of course, Snow's first thought is to hop on and ride the dangerous Falci. How exactly you ride a rolling sphere, I don't know. It's my fault Grand Pulse ended up like this, isn't it? What? I remember everything. I became Ragnarok. I scarred Cocoon. And I left Grand Pulse in this mess. Why the hell does this game keep setting up mysteries only to have no big moment for them? First it was their focus being spelled out for them, now Thane gets her memories back just like that. Nothing triggered her or clued her in. The cutscene just begins and hey, my memory's back. Oh yeah, we still have one more party member who hadn't summoned their Adolin yet. Even though Vanille didn't really meet the requirements for triggering one. Which has been clearly spelled out as being depressed or hopeless. Here she was just startled that Fang realized she lied to her. Where is the rest of the party while this Adolin fight is going on anyway? <laughs> you know, I started this whole boner sin as a joke, but damn it, Vanille's ultimate Eidolon attack doesn't cement it into place. I demand to be added to her character wiki. Ugh, the vile peaks all over again. Hey! You did this exact same thing earlier in the game. Why did you expect it to be any different this time around? Actually, this is a repeat of that scene almost exactly. Right up to Hope and the robot wandering off a cliff. Is she trying to stop it? We have learned to love. By the way, where did all these things come from anyway? And why are they randomly saving Hope? These things have been trying to kill us up till now. They hop inside it? That just makes me wonder how they survived being tumbled around like clothes in a dryer during the trip. And later the Falci stops like a taxi so they can get off, even though earlier it nearly ran over Hope because it wouldn't stop. What you doing? The same thing we do every scene, Vanille. Trigger a flashback. This pier doesn't connect to the beach, making it the most useless pier in existence. Hey Sarah. Do you think we'll meet again? I sure am glad they spent all that time developing this heartwarming friendship between Vanille and Sarah before they gave us this scene. Every important thing that happens at this beach happens either at sundown or during a fireworks display. I hear Michael Bay will be vacationing here next summer. Come on camera, just pan a little faster and... Damn it! So close. If it's too much to deal with, face it later. Really? <laughs> Sometimes things seem easier when you look at them from a distance, you know? But does that really work? Of course, putting off your problems until a later date is a tried and proven course of action. Looking at these two together only makes me realize that Vanille looks more like Sarah's sister than Lightning does. I really like this shot. For some reason. Sarah says she wants to talk. Stop having flashbacks about me. It's really boring. Don't you let her down, you hear me? <sighs> Don't worry. This tier will be her last. <laughs> this is one of those times that I'm happy that the sequels were spoiled for me. We get through there, and we'll be in Ava. Doesn't exactly look like it's gonna be a leisurely stroll. Or you could just go around it. There's really no reason to go up and over this broken tower. I mean, it's a broken tower. It was never meant to be traversed horizontally anyway. Get back! It's just a little bit of fire. Snow could easily put that out with Shiva, but instead they have to have magic statues put it out for them. Are you kidding me now? It's just a few feet of ice. You can walk over it no problem. The worst that can happen is you slip and fall down. You don't need magic statues to help you over it. Which is your house? What do you mean which is ours? All of them. They're all ours. Yep, everyone in the village lived together. Communism. Barthandalus tries to pull the whole look like a loved one and convince him to do something they shouldn't routine. And strangely, in this game where all of the cliches have aligned perfectly, this one fails immediately. Even Snow sees through it. Also, I'm really curious about just how long Barthandalus spent walking around in the body of a teenage girl. Destroy Orphan. We'll save the world. Stop it! You can't do that. You love me too much. For an all-powerful machine god, Barthandalus is really bad at getting the hint that they're not buying this. Probably didn't help that he acts as creepy as possible. The seeds of destruction take root, even now. What did you do to Cocoon? I resigned, appointing Reigns as Primarch in my stead. Of course, the Cavalry's eyes will see our friend as nothing more than a traitor to their cause. 
They'll say the foul sea got to him too, or some such drivel. And imagine when I spread word that it's Orphan tugging at his strings. What happens next? What? Uh, You're gonna use the cavalry to take the thing out? So if regular humans can destroy Orphan, why didn't you do that years ago instead of putting together this plan involving Pulse of the Sea? That's a lot more straightforward. I speak for everyone who's ever played this game when I say, fuck this boss fight. Fuck this boss fight in particular. Allow me to extend my invitation. Why do you keep acting like you're winning? This makes twice you've gotten your ass kicked and your plan still revolves around the Lassie deciding to go along with it, which they literally have no reason to do. You're not offering them anything. You could at least dangle the return of Sarah and Dodge to spice up the deal. I guess it's new, huh? Yeah, must be. I suppose it might be a record of what happened. You know, after we turned to Crystal. Oh, so it's a convenient plot device. You told me on Cocoon. Hmm? It's not a question of can or can't. We just do it. Motivational speech number 42. People of Cocoon, my fellow citizens, we have survived the twilight and gather now to welcome the dawn of the day on which we decide our fate. Many are the lessons this is a really bizarre speech to give it what amounts to an F-Zero race. Now this is pod racing. I mean, uh, Quidditch? I mean, whatever it is, it's stupid looking and I don't know the rules. Odin! You guys just fell out of a plane that came out of a portal. How did you already have your Adolans ready? Especially considering you have to shoot them to summon them in cutscenes. Why did you start the invasion of Cocoon at the racetrack anyway? Probably should have covered that. Good point. Why haven't you guys ever bothered to cover those up? Sarah had the right idea. Hi there. Why did this guy just stop on a dime for him? Your goal is to kill him. Just run him over. I have no idea what the hell is going on here. Michael Bay action scenes are more consistent and use less jump cuts. They're saying eating is crawling post nasties. How did you hear all of that in just two seconds of having the radio to your ear? Did we cause this by coming back? Did you cause all of this? Ten minutes after you come back from Pulse, which is what Barthandalus wants you to do, Pulse invades. I think you can lay the blame squarely on you. Only we could fly. We can jump. Huh? What are you? Nothing to it! <gasps> See you ground side. Wait a minute. <sighs> I'm sorry, what? You've had these gravity grenades the entire time? Why haven't you used them before now? Like when Saz nearly died. Why didn't Snow use one when Hope's mom fell and then he fell? Or when Saz was shot down? Or when Snow and Hope fell off the building? Or when Hope and Vanille were sucked out of the plane. And Lightning even has a gravity switch built into her thumb. Why did she even need one? You've just made all of the falls that those people survived even more ridiculous with the introduction of this thing. Because why didn't they use it when they had it? You're all crazy! Don't want to get left behind, do you? Does anyone want to explain to Vanille, who clearly doesn't understand any of this gravity grenade stuff, what to do before she jumps off and gets herself killed? Come to think of it, how did Fang know what to do? She's in the same boat Vanille is. A Grand Pulse hillbilly who's been out of the technological loop for a few centuries. These guys show up again after a 20 hour hiatus to open a locked door before disappearing again until a sequel where they're just as pointless. What's our motto? Valsia, no match for Nora! Wait, how did they all know to come up with the same new motto on the spot for this situation? This game is throwing away every single plot point it bothered to set up in the first half of the game. You have to be a lassie before you can turn into a seeth, and fail your focus at that. These soldiers just transformed instantly. Dodge! Sarah! Yeah. Dodge! <gasps> no! It isn't real. It's just foul sea smoke and mirrors. You know that for certain? Because if I was Barth Andalus and I wanted you to kill me, killing your fiancé and son in front of you would be the method I'd use for pushing you over the edge. Actually, why wouldn't he do that instead of an illusion? Oh right, it would have made sense. Men fight men. Men battle beasts. Cocoon wars with Pulse. There can be no end to such conflict. Yes there could, if you'd stop instigating it. You turned the people against the sea and sent the army after them and teleported Pulse monsters to Cocoon. This is literally all the foul sea's fault. This is the third time they've kicked Barthandalus' ass. What makes this time so different? The other two times after he lost, he just reappeared in human form and gloated. <laughs> Didn't that bird already fuse with Barthandalus at the start of the fight? The fact that I had to watch a video of this on YouTube with the subtitles turned on just to understand what he's saying. <laughs> Oh, 
probably the only time in this game that I was impressed with the character design and scene in general. So this game managed one reverse ding that didn't involve Snow getting smacked around. For someone who wants to die, you were putting up one hell of a fight. Have you ever paused to consider our reason for making the sea of men? Men dream, aspire, and through indomitable force of will achieve the impossible. Your power is beyond measure. Humans are awesome because of free will cliché. Submit the sea. Become Ragnarok. Isn't this exactly what I said earlier that Barthandalus should have done? All he needed was to torture Vanilla in front of Fang. Why did he need the others at all? We have no need to flood the sea. Then why did you make them? Orphan! I'll do it. I'll destroy you. Okay, I'll do what you want, which will result in the death of everyone including Vanille. I am not very smart. <laughs> everyone besides Fang and Vanille just turned into a Seath. Don't worry, I'm sure we'll only take a flashback or the power of friendship to turn them human again, even though it's supposed to be impossible to return back to normal. <laughs> Maniacal laugh. One minute of flashbacks. You're alive! But you can't be. Where were you? Somewhere cold and dark. Just thinking about everything that happened up until now. Fucking called it. 30 seconds of Instagram filtered flashbacks. This isn't even my final form cliche. You overreach yourselves. No, we overreach you. Great comeback, Lightning. Also, I don't think that phrase works like that. When we think there's no hope left, we keep looking until we find some. Maybe Cocoon is past saving, but it's our home, and we'll protect it or die trying! Everyone flourish your weapons. You think the end of the world is salvation. All you care about is death's release, so take it! he wants you to do, you fucking idiot! We're here to stop him. We've come to save Cocoon, right? Right! No, you just did exactly what he wanted you to do. Now you have to rely on a contrived plot device to have a happy ending. Gravity finally gives up and just lets Snow and the rest of the party float in the air. Yeah, and now. Vanilla and Fang fuse together into Ragnarok, which destroys all the pulse monsters on Cocoon. How did they even know they could do that? Then they jump into a volcano, which was right above them, and create a crystal pillar to stop Cocoon from crashing into Pulse. Though I still think everyone in Cocoon should be dead because they were in freefall for a while before the sudden stop. The last time we saw Lightning and the others, they were on Cocoon floating in the air. Somehow they got all the way to a field on Pulse in order to turn to Crystal while looking up at the sky. My brand! It's gone! Everyone gets a check to make sure their brand has disappeared except Lightning. For the obvious reasons. Lightning and the rest were also transported to Pulse just so they could have a field to run through when they're reunited with Dodge and Sarah. Sequel baiting. They made two more of these, and they somehow make even less sense. 37 hour playtime and somehow I feel as if I went nowhere and accomplished nothing. Pulselessy, right? Enemies of Cocoon. 